Hi guys and welcome back to my Ender 3 restoration project. This video is going to be a detailed guide on tuning linear rails which most of us commonly use from AliExpress. I have had them for over 4 years collecting dust and rust, but this guide is applicable to new rails as well. In my previous video I went over what needed to be changed about my Ender 3, and how I disassembled it down to the bare extrusions. I will be reusing some of the linear rails after some restorations so let's begin. You will need some very basic materials like a can of WD-40, 1000 grit sandpaper, a small bowl or container, and later on, your preferred lubricant. We are going to disassemble the carriage, and in order to keep the balls from running away from us we will use this small bowl. You can see the gunk that has collected in the carriages, so we need to clean them thoroughly. Let's start by spraying them with good old WD-40. It is recommended to wear gloves while doing this. I am not wearing any right now, but I will later on. I am going to open these four screws, two on each side, that hold the red rubber wiper in place. These screws also lock the carriage ends in place. With the wipers out of the way, you need to remove these retaining wires that hold the ball bearings in place. You can use an X-Acto knife or a small flat screwdriver, but I was having trouble with all of these and I eventually just twisted them open. You need to be careful at this stage because this is where the balls have a tendency to fly off and never be found again. Having WD-40 on at this point helps a lot because it makes the balls stick together. I am quickly going to disassemble the remaining carriages that I have. If you have purchased new rails, especially from AliExpress, you need to follow these steps because the less than optimal quality control in these Chinese factories can lead to gritty rails. Also they are coated in a nasty smelling rust prevention oil that needs to be removed in order to apply the optimal lubricant. If your carriages are new or in good condition you just need to wipe them down to remove the WD-40. But if like me, you have one that is old and gunked up, you will have to take some additional steps. My other three carriages were acceptable, but on this one I had applied excessive thread locker that leaked out and has now solidified. I am going to use the 1000 grit sandpaper to remove the discoloration. After sanding, it is important to clean everything thoroughly so that no grit remains in the carriages. We are using very high grit sandpaper so it will not damage the carriages but it is always good to remove as much of the grit and crud as possible in order to prolong the life of the rails. I am also going to wipe down all the screws, wipers and plastic pieces to remove excess WD-40 and to clean all the components. If your carriages are new, it's also a good idea to soak them in isopropyl alcohol to remove all of the factory rust prevention oil. For the ball bearings, I am going to spray some WD-40 into the bowl and give them a good stir. You can also use alcohol but WD-40 works fine. Then I will use a tissue paper to soak up the excess WD-40 and remove all the balls onto a paper towel. Be careful at this point if you have used alcohol because the balls will not stick to each other and you could lose a few.
Now they all look nice and shiny. I am going to reassemble all the carriages just like the disassembly but in the reverse order. First you need to connect the plastic pieces to the metal block. They have guide tabs and they will click into place. Next, you need to install the retaining wires. Here I found out that I had mixed up all the wires, thinking they are all the same, but that was not the case. The lengths are slightly different, so it is a good idea to keep track of which wire belongs to which carriage. If you have the correct wire, it will simply snap into place. If it's shorter, it will be very difficult to get it to snap. Don't try to force it into place because if you bend it, it will not retain the balls effectively and the likelihood of them falling out will be much higher. If the retaining wire is longer, it will be very loose. So again, try not to get them mixed up like me. Installing the wipers is just a matter of tightening the screws, however we will revisit this step again as we need to adjust their position after putting the carriage on the rail. Next, we need to add the balls in the carriage block. It helps to use something magnetic like this screwdriver that I am using. If your retaining wires are the proper tightness, this step is easier. You need to push the ball in, the retainer will flex, and then snap back and hold the ball in place. That however is not always the case. Many times the retainer will be loose, and the balls will keep falling out. It is a bit fiddly, but eventually you will get all of them in. Initially I tried by keeping the carriage in a horizontal position but later I found out that keeping the carriage vertical is much better as gravity works in your favor. One point to note here is that if you already have the balls in the top slot and the retaining wire is loose, there is a major risk of the balls falling out. So keep that in mind. With this one side of one block finished, you can move on to the other side, then to the next block, and then the one after that. It can take a while. Losing some of these balls is inevitable. While one or two missing won't have much effect, if you are missing many of them, the rail can start binding under load. Fortunately, many vendors send extras like this one. Or you can purchase spares separately. To install the carriage on the rail, you need this plastic guide. It has a higher tolerance than the linear rail and slides on much easier, so the chance of pushing out any of the balls is much lower. With the plastic guide in place, you can push the rail in without any worry. If you did not get this guide with your rails, you can download and print one from Thingiverse. With the carriages done, we can turn our attention to the rails. The process is similar, and in some ways easier. You need to spray them with WD-40 or alcohol, clean them to remove dust and grit, and you are done. Unless you have old corroded rails like me. The corrosion has not spread to the ball tracks so it will not affect the accuracy of the rail. Removing it is purely for aesthetic purposes. The rails are made from carbon steel, and in my experience, they will start showing signs of corrosion if left out even for a single night without the proper protection. Thankfully, removing the corrosion is not too difficult. You just need to put in some elbow grease. I am going to spray them down with WD-40 and use 1000 grid sandpaper to give them a good scrubbing. The WD-40 keeps things lubricated and prevents the sandpaper from clogging up too quickly. Wearing gloves for this step is very important as the fine grime can get under your fingernails and it's almost impossible to remove. Also long-term exposure to these chemicals can be harmful to your skin. The top surface of the rail is not part of the motion system so sanding it down does not affect the accuracy of the rail. However, you need to be careful not to damage the ball tracks on the sides, and avoid getting too much grit into them. Whatever goes in now, you will have to eventually clean it all out.
Once you are happy with the way it looks, spray down the rails with fresh WD-40 and clean the rails. You need to be thorough at this step because you don't want any of the nasty stuff getting inside your carriage when you install it later. Using a flat screwdriver, or even your fingernails, work your way into the ball tracks and clean them until everything has been removed. And there you have it. Just like new. Well, almost. With the carriage and rails ready, we need to lubricate them. Lubrication serves two purposes. It makes the rails run smooth with increased lifespan, and a thin layer over the rails prevents corrosion. There are two main categories of lubes to choose from, oil and grease. You can decide which one is more suitable to your needs. I will show you the process of lubricating with both types, and also their pros and cons. First, let's start with the oil. When selecting a lubricating oil, you should opt for one that has a higher viscosity so it clings better to the rail. Thinner oils will run off quickly, in a matter of days, and will probably leave a mess on your printer. The main advantage of oil is that it will have a lower resistance to motion, theoretically allowing faster speeds. The problem, however, is that oil needs more cleanup and more frequent reapplications. To apply the oil, you can use a Q-tip. Slide the carriage to the end of the rail, exposing about a quarter of the balls. Liberally apply the oil, then slide the carriage to the other end of the rail, and repeat the same. Then use the Q-tip to apply oil directly to the ball tracks of the rail, although this time you should use thin layers. Run the carriage a few times over the rail, then clean off the excess. Grease sticks better to the rails so you won't have to reapply it as often, but it has more resistance to motion as compared to oil. Most people prefer to use grease though, because the majority is not looking to print at extreme speeds. Applying grease is a bit messy so get your gloves on. Take some grease on your fingertip and pack it into the carriage balls on both sides. Then slide the plastic guide into the carriage, followed by the rail. Run the carriage a few times on the rail, then move the carriage to the end of the rail and pack it with some more grease. Repeat as required. Because grease doesn't flow, you will have to ensure that a thin layer covers the entire rail to prevent corrosion. Use your hands to spread it onto the rails. After you have lubricated the rails, you should wrap them up in plastic if you are going to store them for an extended period of time. This whole process can be messy and tends to leave oil and grease everywhere. Thankfully, a simple kitchen degreaser spray is all you need for cleanup. Spray some onto the surface, let it work its magic, then wipe it off. Thanks for watching and hopefully this guide will help you in restoring your rails. Like and subscribe to the channel as I have much more content planned up ahead. See you in the next one.